Hello and welcome to another Religious Studies Project Conference video. Uh, this time we're coming from uh, the Open Universities Conference on, see if I can get this up there, Contemporary Religion in Historical Perspectives, Publics and Performances. I've got a set of questions that I'm going to go and ask the pundits at the conference so you'll get a montage of responses to some of the most difficult things that I could think to ask people. For these questions I've uh, taken inspiration from the conference handbook which begins with the opening line at a time when the public role of the university is under increasing scrutiny how can we ensure that research and teaching about religions reaches new publics. Question number two is, who are the new publics that we are trying to reach out to? It depends really what you mean by new publics. I mean, the Open University has a history of engaging through education with a great variety of potential publics and they become actually students. In terms of the, the new publics, I'm not sure about the new publics. I've ranted about this to quite a number of people in the course of this <laughs> conference, actually. Not sure what that says about me. Um, but I would like to see uh, different levels of education explicitly engaging with each other more. Mm. Uh, I think it's about secondary and tertiary education, the teachers who are teaching the people who will be our undergraduates and our future researchers, they need to be engaged in the research that we're doing now and the processes that we're engaged in now with subjects uh, and the progression of that subject and the nature of that subject because those things change and I think there's an almost almost total disconnect at the moment between what teachers are doing in schools and colleges and what universities are doing mm. uh, at, at higher and higher education level so I think that mm. as a specific public that is one I would like to see targeted mm. and I think it has to be the universities targeting that public and not the other way around because that public doesn't have a great deal of time or energy to do it <laughs> facing up they're not encouraged to do it whereas universities it seems are being actively encouraged to do it, so, so yeah. let's do it. Universities have uh, struggled, I think, to know how to engage with the widest possible range of publics that are on our doorstep anyway. Um, so um, in my own field of lifelong learning, for example, we've been uh, obviously at the forefront of the what's called the widening participation agenda, which has become a, a bit of a kind of political football. But what widening participation stands for is ensuring that universities link with the widest range of people in terms of ethnicity, religious background, social class um, and th those for me are the new publics that universities have to look at more and more at engaging with to ensure that what the universities offer in terms of their subject matter is made available to people who have the capacity to study um, and that what universities are doing actually actively bears in mind the widest range of people who are there in UK society. And on, a, on a slightly longer time scale we are seeing or we have seen a, a, a democratisation of, of access to, to academic discussion at different levels and, and access to universities indeed and that has come with many issues and many problems but I still think that there's a great value to that um, that certainly just speaking from a personal perspective the ability of myself to, to, to be able to come in and do a PhD, start a PhD PhD at the age of 40, you know, um, is 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 very very important. Um, so the widening of access to those kinds of spaces, on the one hand, is very very important, and and I think that we don't want to lose that. Uh, I think that's something that, that we that we definitely want to keep. But at the same time, then it's also it, it also it's also about who you know how we're speaking to the world outside of of, of, of academia. And that um, becomes ever more complicated as we get more and more diversified funding streams into research and into to academic um, uh, situations and projects of different kinds. We're also seeing more and more um, um, pressure on universities to have impact and engagement obviously with, with different kinds of publics and, 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 and who decides who those publics is is in some ways a more interesting question to me than who I think those publics are. New publics. So I guess I think about new publics as different ways of segmenting the population into kind of demographic, demographic categories. Um, I think there's a lot of, there's undue attention to the public of the, the mainstream press 
which is disproportionate, I think, to its influence on real public opinion, although it seems to influence politicians a lot. I think that most of the public is accessed, accessing media more through their personal connections on social media, and the discussion is much broader than the mainstream media makes, um, gives an impression of. So I think that understanding the limitations of the, the more traditional forms of media and addressing new publics in the form of direct interaction through social media, like the Religious Studies Project. We might also add, although it's a rather more hopeful note, that we can uh, get the ear of the media um, finally, uh, perhaps as um, we move to a media that's more based on long-form works, long-form documentary and TV series, long-form podcast formats, that we can finally get to a place where the subtleties of the work that we do um, feed into the way that uh, the media reports on new religions, uh, religious extremism, and we don't merely have these catalogues of the world's faiths um, done by uh, openly or crypto theologians, um, respectively. Um, we're seeing some movement on that. We've got a lot of work to do for that to become uh, an audience, but I think when it does, that's that could change the way that the public perceives what we do in an enormously beneficial way. But also uh, talking to particular interest groups and research areas, having more direct, maybe through industry or we deal with religion, so, so various spheres in which religion interacts with public life, having more direct contact I think is probably important. I'm not entirely sure what I mean by that. I still think we're talking about publics. My experience on the Pilgrimage and England Cathedrals uh, project has been that we did research in cathedrals and people have received that with open arms. We wouldn't necessarily have expected quite such an enthusiastic response to our research as we got from cathedrals and other people in the heritage industry and so on. So maybe we need to be thinking about there are official bodies that we can feed information into and they can feed that out but actually it's anyone we can get interested in what we're doing and that it might inspire them to think differently about what they do or where they are or how they might engage with their world, I think. <laughs>